Yeah. Okay, ladies and gents, we are here. Take two for Kiera and Dorothy Inez. Let me make sure we are. Okay, let me make sure people can see us. Because I know I can see us. Let's see. Let's see, Kiera. All right. It's refreshing. Okay, good. It was going only to Natasha. All right. Okay, ladies and gents, we are here. Kiera and Dorothy Inez. Kiera, can you see us this time? Yes. I think so. <laughs> We're here, people. We have made it. We have evolved to take two of Dorothy Inez and Kiera, legendary leaders, episode one, live and in person. So, yay! So I'm so glad today for this first episode, I have my beloved friend and sister, Kiera Jones, uh, here in the house. She is going to interview me today, and we're going to talk about entrepreneurship and confidence and just about the journey of being an entrepreneur. And our hope is that you will be inspired today and that you will take away information that will help you in your journey as an entrepreneur or as a woman considering becoming an entrepreneur. Um, Cause Kiera and I both were in corporate for years and we decided to step out and step into that thing that we were called to do our soul's calling. And so we just want to share with you today. And as we move forward um, with the legendary leaders, uh, um, what do you call it? Series, so to speak. I'll be interviewing other women and Kiera will be my first because she interviewed her sister first. So she gets, you'll be my first guest, Miss Kiera. So on that note, let me introduce Miss Kiera Jones. Hopefully I won't stumble over my words this time, Kiera. I will get it together. Okay. <laughs> So, Miss Kiara Jones, aka the Shine Strategist. Can you guys see what we have in common already? She is the Shine Strategist. She is an international best selling author, keynote speaker, and coach to powerhouse up leveling female coaches, consultants, speakers, and service providers. As CEO of Kiara Jones International, She's built her international coaching practice from zero to 5K in two months and then scaled to 20 and 40K months. How many of y'all could use a little bit of that? Mm, I know I could. And she is on a mission more than ever to help women transform how they see themselves and their expertise so they can powerfully shine in life and in business and stop giving away their expertise for pennies. Girl, you know I love you for that. <clears throat> Through her private coaching programs, masterminds, and trainings, Kiera helps women all around the world to boldly and strategically shine in their expertise and monetize it online so they can authentically up-level their impact and income. Prior to her current endeavors, Excuse me, Kiera worked in corporate sales and consulting for a Fortune 500 company, managing multiple five and seven figure accounts. She also owned an online accessory brand featured in over 70 pop up shops, shipping hundreds of orders nationwide where her love for online business was born. When Kiera isn't helping women monetize their monetize their shine so they can financially stop giving their expertise away for pennies and unapologetically claim their six-figure success with the client's impact and freedom they dream about at night, she's spending time with her family and traveling the world one strawberry mango margarita at a time. Please welcome Miss Kiera Jones. Yay, Amanda's here. Amy is here. Welcome, Kiera. 
We got people. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be a part of the Legendary Leader Series podcast, everything that's going on. And thank you for allowing me to be the one to interview you, Miss Dorothy Inez. I'm super, super excited for you to share so much more about you. Yep. I'm only, I, I would only allow the best to do this, you know? So, you know, <laughs> from one star to another. <laughs> shine together. We shine together. We shine brighter together. We're even wearing the same glasses. Oh my God. We did not plan that. <laughs> <laughs> so for the viewers who um, have not had the pleasure of getting to know the beautiful Dorothy Inez, let me share a little bit more about her with you. So Dorothy Inez is a three-time international best-selling author, a speaker, and a confidence and presence coach for high-achieving, God-centered women, coaches, speakers, and experts. She helps them transform from fearful to fearless so they show up online and in person so they can quickly and easily have more influence, more income, and more impact in the world with their business. It is through her own journey of feeling unworthy, not enough, and rejected that she discovered her strength through self-love and confidence. She unblocked her power and potential through her identity in God. This empowered her to boldly own who she was uniquely created to be. This discovery led to her passion for helping women around the world have the courage to step into their uh, dream business, excuse me, speak their truth and start saying yes to themselves. <laughs> It is every woman's birthright, oh my goodness, excuse me, to be prosperous, abundant, and a star in their life. When she's not coaching and spending time with her two little beautiful dogs, uh, she's studying spirituality and listening to Prince himself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Welcome, Natasha, all the way from Europe. Welcome, welcome. So glad you all are here. For some reason, my beautiful hostess has um, left the building. I see Ed is in the house, too. Let me see what's happened. See, this is, it, see, something must be going on that the universe doesn't want us to show up today, but we're not letting anything stop us today. So <clears throat> the first question Kiara was going to ask us, hopefully she comes back in. Let me see if she has any if she messages me. But the first question, Kiera, we had on the agenda was to tell you about my name. So for those of you who don't know me, I go by Dorothy Inez, not Dorothy. And so <clears throat> a lot of people tend to call me Dorothy. And as Kiera knows, I hate being called Dorothy. She's back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I was there all the time. You were just gone, but you're back. And so I hate being called Dorothy. And let me tell you how that came about. When I first started my business, my very first coach asked me, she's like, what do you want to call your business? Are you going to be Inez Del Tufo? Do you have a, because at the time I just went by Inez, do you have a name in mind? And I said, you know, let me tap in to spirit, to God and ask God because he gave me this vision. And then the Lord says to me, I want you to go by Dorothy Inez. I was like, Dorothy, you know, I hate that name. He's like, but remember what your name means. Dorothy means gift of God. And Inez means with a pure heart. And this is who I have called you to be. And so Dorothy Inez was born. If you know anything about scripture, back in the day, they used to change people's names based on their, their uh, purpose, their call in life. And mine is to be a gift of God with a pure heart to all of the women that I serve. And I was telling Kier when we did this round one, I was saying, you know, at that time when this transformation happened for me, the switching of my name, I was still dealing with a lot of ugly in my life because I was just coming out of um, my own personal transformation. So I think God changing my name was to meet for me to constantly have a reminder to be a gift of God, to have that pure heart, because I had a whole lot of ugly going on. 
So that's my story, ladies. That's why I require you to call me Dorothy Inez. And God is always testing my patience because every day somebody calls me Dorothy. And, <clears throat> but okay. <laughs> Gift of God with the period. Period. <laughs> and, so beautiful. Thank you. And one thing I want to say, ladies. Hey, Alicia, I see you. Welcome. Um, is put your questions below. If you have any questions for me or for, for Kiera, put them below. If I don't see them here, I will be coming back after the broadcast to answer your questions. So feel free to put those down below. So, Kiera, what's your next question for me? I jumped in. I know, I know. Great. Thank you. So, tell us a little bit more about yourself before you became a business owner. Well, girl, I was working a pole at this club. No, just joking. <laughs> no, just joking. <laughs> All right. That wasn't part of the, the that, that wasn't whatever. So before, uh, before uh, working, being an entrepreneur, I was 25 years in sales and service and telecommunications in the capacity of manager and sales trainer. And I managed teams up to, I used to have 150 employees and um, I was coaching them in the call centers. And what ended up happening is as a coach, Kiera, every team that every person that was hired onto my team, I used to play this video called This Is Your Decade by Les Brown. I think I played that video for 10 years for every employee. But the thing was, I never heard that video, the message for myself, because I believe that this corporate career, it was my destiny. This is what I was called to do. And then I began to get unsatisfied inside of my job when I found out this male who was younger than me, less experienced, I found out he was making 7K more a year than me. And I began to get dissatisfied. And I just happened when I played that video for my team, heard the message for me. And the message was, Les was saying, what dreams and inventions do you still have left inside of you? What is it that you were supposed to do but didn't do? Because here's the truth. The graveyard is the richest place on the planet because so many people die with their dreams and inventions left inside. And it was at that point, Kiera, that something clicked inside of me. I think I was 38 at the time and something clicked inside of me. And I said, you know what? I am going to finish that bachelor's degree that I'd been that had been lingering for 10 years. And I'm going to do the thing I always dreamed of besides dancing for Prince is I'm going to become a celebrity makeup artist. And I did both of those things. And I quit my job on my 40th birthday. And I became a professional makeup artist artist on my 40th birthday. So what that's my story. To yourself. <laughs> huh? What a birthday gift to yourself. Yes, yes. It was it was this, one of the scariest things, but I knew that this was something I had to do, Kira. I didn't want to be, you know, an old lady. I didn't want to make that graveyard any richer, not on my dime. <laughs> I love that. And something that I'm always just constantly inspired by with you is that you still go after everything that you want regardless of age or the time it takes or anything and i love that because as a young woman looking up to women like you especially in the business world i see so many of us who uh sometimes think that if something doesn't happen now it's never going to happen and we give up or even you know i even look to my mom who's i'm sure she still has things that she wants to do because she gave so much up for her kids so um i think I know that you are that level of inspiration to so many women, regardless of your age, you can still do it. And that makes me wonder for you because you, you talk about this calling that you had. So for the women that are listening, how do they discover the calling within themselves too? 
Good question, Kira, and and thanks for for bringing up the piece about age. Because if you're listening and you're 40 or older, let me tell you, life is just beginning. You know, I just turned 51, and so it's from the time that Les told me this was my decade. I've lived a decade since that decision, and I'm in another phase. I just finished my master's, and a big part of knowing. Um, how to discover your calling is, first of all, you have to be willing to do the inner work because it took me here. I had to do the inner work. It took years, um, you know, of doing the work. And when I hired my very first coach, she was like, Dorothy Inez, I can't even work with you on your business until we do some inner work because you can't fully serve until you've done your own work. So that's number one. Number two is look at what are your natural gifts? What what naturally comes to you and flows, you know, out of you? What do people naturally ask advice, you know, from you for? What do they come to you for? And then what lights you up? What do you just like you could do all day and be like, oh my God, this isn't work, you know? And then look at your life experiences. How many of us go through life, Kiera, thinking, why me? Why is this happening to me? You know, I was abandoned at the age of three by my birth mother, and I could have stayed stuck in that story because I was in that story, girl, for up until I had my transformation till 40. I was as always the victim, full of anger. But what I found, Kiera, is that everything happened on purpose for my purpose. I had to go through these things in order to become the woman that I am today. If I didn't go through these, I couldn't help women stand in confidence because I thought I was worthless. I thought I didn't, you know, I was unlovable. I was, I dealt, dealt with rejection. So you've got to do your work and you've got to see that what's happening to you is really happening for you. And then finally, Kiera, is you've got to tap into God, spirit, universe, whatever it is for you, the divine, you've got to be in alignment with it because the divine is who sent you here for purpose with purpose. So that's what I would say, Kiera. Wow. <laughs> I don't think there's any more questions on that. I think we all got it. A lot of yeah. work. Hopefully you wrote those steps down. Yeah. I love that you talk about really doing the inner work for you. And, you know, one thing that I will say, you know, spending a couple years in this online world is that I see so many people ready to, you know, kickstart their business or finally go after their dream. But we right. don't necessarily invest in us first, because in order to be a leader, you have to work on that inner work the way that you're talking about. So, you know, a lot of times different things are stuff, right? It comes up. Mm -hmm. We're not ready to deal with it. So as you were, you know, coming along in your journey, was there anything that almost stopped you from stepping into your purpose and how did you overcome it? Absolutely. So the, the two, there were two things. Number one was stability. Cause like I told you, I was in a job and you know, whoa, I wasn't just changing jobs. I was changing professions. This is something you do in your twenties, not your forties. So I had stability. So there was the, the fear of, you know, what's going to happen, you know, fear of failure. Um, what if I step out and do this and the fear of failure, the, the I, because Stability, while it was there, it wasn't as big of a problem because I had a husband to, you know, back me up financially. And but it was still there because I was an independent woman. Then the fear of failure really stemmed, if I keep it really real, out of disappointing not as much myself, but my father. Because my father always, he never believed in me wanting to do these creative, you know, these creative jobs. I always wanted to dance and sing. That was my number one thing. Makeup was the backup job, Kira. It's like if Prince didn't discover me, I was going to be his makeup artist. You know? <laughs> so it was the fear of, of failing. And instead of letting that hold me back and worrying about what my dad was going to say is I had to do it because it was my soul's 
calling. It's like, I just, like I told you before, I didn't want to be that old lady rocking on the, the porch back and forth wondering what if I had done, I wonder, no, I'm not wondering about anything in my life. If I want to do it, I'm doing it, Kiara. Oh, I love it. And you're so bold and confident about it too. I love but it. I wasn't always this way, you know? Yeah. So you weren't always this way. So, so now because you're on the other side and even more, you're helping other women with that and, and transition and, and create that experience for them. What does confidence look like? And why do you think it's so important, especially for women entrepreneurs? Well, confidence is super important, you know, for women entrepreneurs, because a lot of it requires you taking bold action. It requires you to be visible, to show up in places and networking events and spaces that are uncomfortable. And if you don't have the confidence uh, to do those things, you will quickly fail. You will quickly give up. You, you know, you'll be the world's best kept secret. So when a woman has confidence, number one, she learns how to take care of herself, you know, self-love and confidence. I mean, self-love and um, um, care is not confidence. Self-love and self-care are number one. She has boundaries. She becomes unapologetic about who she is. She's willing to do things that other people aren't willing to do because she doesn't care what you think. You know, so she she lets her yeses be yeses, her noes be no. She honors her word. She speaks her truth and she's willing to do things that other people aren't willing to do, like work those late nights, like get up and speak or be on that podcast or push that go live button in spite of her fear. So that's what confidence looks like to me, Kiera. That is amazing. I heard visibility, be uncomfortable, um, do things that others aren't necessarily willing to do. Powerful, powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what your thoughts are on why do you think women lack confidence? Why? Where do you think this idea of self-doubt comes from within so many of us? Mm -hmm. Good question. A lot of what I found when I work with women is the, the lack of self-confidence typically originates in the formative years. When we come to this earth, when we're born, we're like, oh, I'm going to be Wonder Woman, you know, I'm going to be, you know, for men, I'm going to be Superman, or I'm going to be president, or I'm going to be a nurse, or I'm going to be an actress, a star like me. I wanted to be a star. And I was told I couldn't. So what typically happens is parents happen and we kind of get stuck in their limitations you know we're they they're vicariously living through us so what didn't work for them they assume won't work for us or they try to live vicariously through us and they make us do things that we didn't necessarily um want to do and then we end up having life experiences negative life experiences that also bring us down we get in the wrong relationships with a man who says we're not good enough. We're not worthy. And so these things tend to build up in us, especially as women and hold us back and make us doubt ourselves. Wow. Wow. Connie says that she's rocking on her porch. <laughs> you may <have> <laughs> Well, Connie, don't rock at 60, though, okay? I want to make sure you have accomplished all of your dreams. Connie's my age. Never you know, so let me just see some of these while we're looking. You know, I see some women are commenting. Amanda says the story made her cry. I guess she's talking about my uh, story about my uh, name. Yeah, all things work together for good. Yes, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. So, okay, Kiera. Yeah, so I've always thought about, are we born with confidence? So as a confidence and presence expert, I would love to know, do you believe we're born with confidence? And for your clients who maybe aren't born with confidence, how do you help them transition uh, and really transform that so they can have that? So 
it's a twofold answer. Yes, we're born with confidence. Uh, some people are born with confidence. Um, but here's the thing here. There, when I was doing my thesis work, I heard about, um, I came across a neuropsychologist. Um, his name was Steve Simone. And he was doing, he did 40 years of research on confidence with, um, I can't even say that, re some type of monkey. And this type of monkey carry, carries 90% of our DNA. And when they observed these monkeys, what they discovered is that confidence is a nature and nurture uh, situation. So it's natural, but also environmental, which ties back into how our parents, you know, we come into this world super confident, but then parents or people around us, our teacher or our environment says no to who we are, and that begins to shift our confidence. So yes, um, you are born with it, but you can also cultivate it. And you can cultivate it by first, recognizing your negative belief patterns, your negative behaviors that you have um, going on. You can look at transforming yourself by knowing who you are, your identity, like we talked about, getting to know who you are, yourself, mastery, by taking action and being willing to fail, because you're not going to master it the first time. I wish we did, but we don't. OK, so mastery is another way. And then finally, you need support. You need accountability. And so these are the four ways that I help women in my programs as we get rid of that. Now. And I'm just going to call you out because I, I really, uh, maybe last week or maybe it was earlier or yeah, last week, I think you had a client who I think you did like one session with her. And it completely transformed things for and she like double, I think tripled her rates or something? Tripled her prices, yes. Wow. That was one of my most powerful sessions. I was working one on one with one of my clients last week, and she, you know, she I know she was worth way more. She was charging four ninety seven for her I want to say a 30 day program and she's meeting with these people every week, giving so much content, so much value. And I was like, when we broke it down, I was like, how many hours are you spent? We were, I was like, what is this what you want to be paid? She was like, Oh my God, Dorothy Inez, nobody has ever broken it down for me like this because we looked at the value that she brings the experience who she is and she decided she went and publicly announced she is what is it tripling her rates so yeah one session one hour session transformation happened wow Class it definitely is especially when you See the worthiness of what you who you are and what what you do so speaking of her can you tell us a little bit more about the women that you work with so for example we have so many women here i'm so so powerful we can all use some help with our confidence and presence to really take our business to the next level how do we know when it's time to hire the dorothy inez the to hire the Dorothy Inez, you know, it's like there's two women that I love working with. I mean, I'll work with anyone if I think we're a good fit. But who I love working with are two women. One is the woman who is like me. She's working in corporate, doing her side hustle, but she knows she's being called to more. And you're sitting there and you're like, man, I'm just tired of this. That's the woman that that's the woman and you need help. You know, you need a strategy. You need a plan of how to get out of the job. You need to get your business to a certain place, bring in a certain amount of income so you can say bye bye. Then that's the person I want to work with you. The second the second woman is the woman who's already in her business. And now she's being called to another level of who she is that 2.0. She needs to start showing up in video. She needs to start doing podcasts and speaking engagement. But even though she's already successful, she's still struggling with the confidence in being visible is, is showing up and owning her spot. Like that's my second woman I love working with. I just love seeing these women transform. Oh, I love it. I love it. And I love hearing about it. <laughs> yes. So we're, we're talking, obviously this is the legendary leader series and show. 
So what makes you a legendary leader? What makes me a legendary leader? What makes me a legendary leader, Kiara, is that I believe that the work, and this is going to tie into legacy too, which I think we, we might talk about, is legendary for me is somebody, something that's memorable, that people are going to tell stories about you for years to come because of how your story impacted their life. And so that's what I believe that the women that I touch, that the, the, the touch that I I don't know how to say put on them, give them the transformation that I provide for them will not only stop with them, but it will trickle down. And that's what makes you, you know, legendary. You're memorable. You know, I stood out because I was bold about my message and I wasn't ashamed to step out and own it. Um, and I did things with excellence, you know, and that makes you stand out when you just own who you are unabashedly, um, unapologetically, and that's what I believe a legendary leader would do, and that's what I'm doing, leading it by example. I love that. And you, you talked about legacy. What is your legacy? So my legacy is helping women to unveil who they truly are so that they step out. Like, you know, I keep going back to in my mind, I have this revelation about Jesus and Jesus, you know, he was bold. He didn't care about what people said. He had a message that people didn't, you know, had never heard before. He was criticized. He was beaten for it and not saying we need to be beaten for it. But I, the legacy I'm leaving is to help women step out with that kind of bold boldness in their life and it will affect their businesses and it will affect their personal relationships. And then anybody who's around them, like I said earlier, will benefit, especially mothers. If they have daughters, they will be able to pass my legacy, which would become their legacy, which would become their daughter's legacy so that we create more empowered and beautiful young women and girls. Absolutely. I talk about the shine movement and it's like a domino effect, like mm -hmm. that it, it exists beyond us. So I love that. I love your legacy. I love your vision. So you talk a lot about, you know, I've heard you talk about God and um, obviously you, you, you mentioned some things about spirituality. So does spirituality play a huge role in the work that you do with your clients? The spirituality play a big role. Absolutely. And it's spirituality, not religion. And, you know, while I am a Jesus follower, I am not religious. And what I like to teach are spiritual principles because that, Kiara, is my secret sauce. That is what makes me stand out. How I do video, I come to, you know, with to, um, I teach video from a spiritual perspective because it's about you as a woman getting grounded in the truth of who you are, your authentic self. And so spirituality, um, is who we really are. This body is just a shell, but who you really are, the essence of you, that's what attracts in clients. That's what brings your tribe towards you. So it's important that we help you get grounded in who you really are so that people meet the real you. Absolutely, absolutely. So again, for all of our viewers, even on the replay, if you have questions, do not hesitate to drop those in so that Ms. Dorothy Inez can take care of them and answer them and make sure you get all the information that you need. So as we conclude our time today, are there any final tips that you would give to our viewers um, or that you want to leave with them? Yeah, absolutely. So ladies, you know, we've talked about, you know, confidence. And one of the things that confident women do is they invest in themselves. They invest in themselves in their personal development. They invest in, you know, having a coach, having the support. They invest in their business. They don't sit back and say, they don't live from this place of lack and limitation. Oh, I don't have the money. You know what? Money is energy, ladies, and it can be created. I don't know if some of you saw my post that I did uh, last week, 
that I wanted some extra money. So what I did is I went in my closet here, I found something to sell, and I created in two hours $600, okay? So don't let money be why you don't invest in yourself because you can create it if you're smart, you're innovative, you have gifts and talents that God can use to help you create the abundance you need, the resources that you need. Number two, make time for your business endeavors. Don't sit here and talk about, oh, I want to have a business, but then you don't have time to do the work. You've got to put the time in, sisters. You know, always putting kids or boyfriends and other things ahead of your calling, and then you say that you failed. No, it's just that you didn't put in the time to make it work. And then number three is don't let fear stop you. You can feel everything and run or you can feel everything and rise. And I say, sisters, rise. Step into the fear because on the other side of that fear is your transformation, is your success, is your abundance, is your prosperity. So I invite you, ladies, to step into the thing that your soul is being called to. And don't worry about the how. All of that will come to you. You first have to give your sacred yes and watch what God will do with your sacred yes. Oh, I love that. If no one is inspired right now to know that you need to first like get to know yourself and what you do on a whole new level and really find your identity as how you were meant to shine in this world and step into it boldly and unapologetically and with massive confidence and really work on the inner stuff that we have to work on so that we can truly be legendary leaders for the women and the men and the little girls and boys who follow us, then I don't know where you've been. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Where have you been? And you know, you know, I, I just, I just really have a passion, a, a passion for this work, Kiara. It just brings, you know, sometimes it brings me to tears when I see these women transform and when they really just, when they're, it's like the scales come off their eyes. And for the first time ever, these women begin to see themselves again, because that little, that person that's there was there from the very beginning when they made an agreement with heaven to come down to earth and you you know it's like to me I look at it as spiritual suicide to not do what your soul is being called to you will never feel feel fulfilled if you don't step into it don't I just beg you not to let fear hold you back because all of us were afraid all of us, Kiara probably was a friend. She was managing big accounts and she decided to do this. Okay. I was making, you know, a hundred K and I decided to do this. Yes, I had a husband, but I also gave up my independence to do this. So um, I just invite you to trust and to to step out and do that thing that your soul is being called to do. And I would love to support you doing it. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I am sure so many women here want to learn how they can connect with you even more. I see Ed saying, thank you, Dorothy, and that's perfect timing. So it's amazing when you start sharing your story and just sharing who you are and, and the message that you were meant to spread into the world. It, tip, it touches people even just here. He says perfect timing. So sounds like that was really helpful for Ed. Um, and uh, Fabi says, step into your greatness, ladies. So absolutely. So how can so how did you know to call Fabby Fabby? Only her friends call her Fabby. <laughs> <Your friend. laughs> huh, that's my girl Fabienne. I love calling her Fabienne. <laughs> and, and Ed, Ed, you know, Kira, Ed knew me. Ed is a longtime friend. He knew me back in corporate. He knew me when I first met my husband. Uh, he was a part of me meeting my husband. My hus he was my husband's boss. <laughs> so, I've known Ed for about 20 years. So amazing. Thank you, Ed, for being here. Fabienne, uh, Connie, Amanda, thank you. And then, sorry, Kira, I got excited. What was your question? Oh, I apologize for getting excited. 
that's how we do work because it, it takes us to another level. So I wanted to make sure we share with people how they can contact you and your team, learn more about what you do, and maybe even inquire about working with you on this ma amazing, massive transformation that you help your clients experience. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for asking. So how you can um, connect with me, of course, because you're watching me here on my personal page. So you can private message me um, there. You can also find me at my website, which is brilliantleadershipinternational.com um, is the other way that those are the two best ways uh, to connect with me. And, um, and again, don't let fear if you're feeling led to work with me, don't, oh God, how much is she going to, see, boom, you went to the wrong place. Think about what's possible for you inside of having support, inside of having, um, you know, your confidence up leveled. What becomes possible for you rather than looking at the negative, being a low vibe person, worrying about money and all that, that all gets worked out. Absolutely, absolutely. Back to you, so do not forget, give the website one more time, just in case. Um, it's it's uh, I'm like, what the heck is it? Uh, brilliantleadershipinternational.com or private message me. Thank you so much. So you heard it, write it down, get your pen and paper. If you know that you're ready to take your confidence, your presence, your business, the impact that you're meant to make in this world to the next level, you need to contact Miss Dorothy Inez and her team so that you can really start to shine in life in a business. Yes, yes, yes. It's time to shine. It's your time. Yeah. So um, that's why I don't have a singing career yet. Uh, <laughs> so I want to give a special thanks, you all, to um, Miss Kiara, because we recorded this interview about two and a half hours ago, and it did not. It, it it broadcasts only to my girl Natasha Lee, it, you know, overseas. I don't know how that happened. And Kiera was so kind to take time out of her moving schedule to help her sister out. See, these are the kinds of friends you want to have in your circle. People like Kiara. So Kiara, thank you so much for being a part of this. And to all of you that, that chose to be a part of this today, Fabienne, Ed, Connie, Valerie was with us, Kiara, uh, Crystal, Amanda, Elisha, Natasha, Avia. So thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with us this afternoon. Have a very, very blessed evening.